Hello folks, I'm back out and I'm at the side of Rannach Moor. Now this little hill is going to be my testing ground for the Hexpeak V4A tent which I bought. I really, really like pyramid tents and lots of people have used the Hexpeak but it's one of those tents I've not actually had the chance to try out. So I'm going to give it a bash tonight. I've already done some modifications to it, but I've got another inner nest I had lying about. I'm going to see if it fits. That could be interesting as well. It's really windy. It wasn't meant to be this windy, so it's going to be a really good test for the tent. And I'm glad I put extra guy lines on it, because by the looks of things, yeah, we might need them. I'm also meeting up with another YouTuber, Murray, a friend of mine who I've been out with many a time. He's coming out tonight later as well. Going to be an interesting night. And also brought quite a few cans of beer for a change. So we'll get this tent set up and I'll show you what it's all about. Well, I have put the original inner into the tent. I did try the one I had from China. It was one that I'd used before with the likes of my Geomid. It probably will work, I just need to do a bit of tweaking with it. So I've put the original in instead. Even the original one's a good inner tent. Plenty of space. You've got this kind of windbreak fabric along the bottom to keep the drafts out. And with a little bit of fettling, you know, it fits lovely. If you want a bit of advice on tips and tricks and how to set this tent up, I suggest you watch Outlawed Landscapes, a fellow YouTuber who has this tent and he has done a lot of modifications to it and he has a really good instructional video on the best way to set it up. I'll leave a link to that at the end or down below and you can see what he's done with his. Now the main thing I have done is with the guy points. I have added quick adjusters onto them. And the way I done that was to basically buy a pack of the line lock adjusters and then heat up a knife on the stove, cut a little slot in the back. And then just feed it on. Now what I really need to do is maybe just add some thread along the back of the loop just to make sure it isn't going to come off. But once it's on, as long as the slot is quite fine, it's not going to come off anyway. So that's what I've done all the way around on the, the midpoints. So it just makes pegging out and adjusting a little bit easier. I haven't actually seam sealed the tent yet because I've just not had the time. So hopefully it won't rain. Something else I'm going to try tonight is a new sleeping pad. And it is the Big Agonis Rapid SL. And it's insulated with Prima Loft. And it's a wide version. And it's also rectangular. And the reason I decided to buy it was because I needed a second one because my wife is looking to come with me on some long distance hikes next year. We're actually considering doing the Cape Wrath Trail together. And we'd actually went up a few weeks ago up to the west coast of Scotland and I took her to a couple of the sections just to experience them. One was the Forkan Ridge and the other was over at the Falls of Glomac just to give her a bit of an insight and experience what those sections are about because those are a couple of the areas that get people a bit worried and it was just to give her an idea so that she wasn't as apprehensive should we come to do it next year so that's an option, we might be doing that but I did notice the price of outdoor gear now is just, it's just rocketing and this was the cheapest mat I could actually get insulated one at a good price so I'm hoping it's going to be good. That's another thing, a tent such as this Hexpeak, I bought this one new, I think it was about £190. 
a great option out there if you're interested in getting into the wild camping. I will happily use this over the winter. I'm going to put it through its paces in the snow. But it really is quite a storm-worthy tent, this. And I think pyramid tents like this are just fantastic in general in the wind. I've always loved pyramid tents. And the fact you have this separate inner here, which you can drop down and you can sit on or just do away with altogether and just sleep on the ground. Yeah, at that kind of price point, it's a bit of a bargain in my eyes. So I'm going to get this new mat set up and we'll see what that's like tonight and I'm hoping it's going to be good. I think we'll take a walk over to the memorial. Now this was the one that I had cleaned the plaque on a couple of years ago now. I think that's about as, as good as I can get it to be honest. Certainly a lot better. Oh, well, there you go, the Ronald Harvey Memorial. Yep, still looking good from the last time I cleaned it. What a spot, what an incredible place. The views out over here is just fantastic, it really is. Amazing. I can see lots of cars parked, photographers coming up here to try and capture the landscape. Especially with the black mount behind the camera there if you get some really moody weather, especially in the winter. All round this area is fantastic for the landscape photography. Okay Ronald, time to go, head back. I was just having a look there and Murray has arrived. So I've decided to get my little meths burner on the go. Have a quick coffee because it'll take him about half an hour to slog up there. So I'm going to have that. It's going to be a, an as does coffee instant latte. Matter of fact, I may actually mix it with an Nescafe. I quite like a strong coffee. And that'll tide me over till he gets here. Murray's just had his supper, he's just away picking up some cans of beer and we're going to have a bit of a blether, matter of fact that's some coming back just now and yeah, what a spot, the sun's going down and I'm hoping that some of these clouds might catch and light up as the sun goes down with a rather nice sunset, see what happens but yeah, we're going to have a few beers we were talking how Murray's son now is getting into the hill walking and he was on about maybe bringing him to a place like this for his first wild camp, which would be ideal because it's not particularly hard to get to and you've got spectacular views. Ideal introduction to camping out in the hills. But here he is. He brought the beer. Beer, beer, beer. Yeah, I brought the beer. <laughs> burst my knee again, thanks, Ray. Aye. I only brought two of you. Look at the size of your can. It's about... Aye, innocent gun. I uh, see yours is half, yeah. but have you got any whiskey? No, no. Uh, He's got the whiskey. Stuff. Now we were going to have a chat about this and I think you're going to chat about it later as well how we don't often bring alcohol when we're out in the hills mainly because of the weight. If you're going up some of these Munros it's like Murray was saying earlier to me you'd be better just taking some whiskey ah, yeah. because you'll get more bang for your buck. Exactly, that's what I do because you know, um, taking... Yeah. This is fine isn't it? This hill's been fine because yeah. it's, it's just yeah. quite a short hill so that's why we've treated ourselves. Yeah. Uh, doing it, going up a Monroe from no, unless it's yeah. like an easy one. Yeah. Nah, take it's, it's bad enough. Some of the Monroes as well where there's no water, it's bad enough taking up two or three litres of water. Nah. Rather than you know, and a few cans. Nah, not my not my thing. But a little treat like this, fantastic. So we'll see what state we're in later. And it also depends how much uh, whiskey you brought. Is uh, it lots? Just a hit, lots? Just a hit, just a hit flask. Oh just the hit. <laughs> I was hoping he was going to say half a bottle. Well, no half a bottle. Does yeah. anyone have this there? Yeah. You've already had one, have you? I had one earlier, yeah. So, uh, anyway, cheers. <laughs> cheers. Ching, ching. All the best, folks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That tastes good. Lovely. The clouds are lovely over here. A lovely pink hue. It's actually getting reflected in the, the water as well. And it's actually a spot here I was at uh, 
quite a while ago now where I was doing some astrophotography because you had the Milky Way coming up and over. That's something I'm going to look forward to doing this year. It's trying to get a bit more astro stuff done, astro shots. Always makes it worthwhile going for a wild camp, especially in winter when you can see the stars in the Milky Way. It's always breathtaking. Even the hills behind now are looking lovely. All those little dots of cloud. Time to start getting stuff packed up. We're just waiting on the sun coming up higher behind the, the camera. But you're getting these lovely colours now, that pink hue on the black mount. Now last night, over by the trees in the distance, that's actually the West Highland Way. It passes right along there in front of those trees as you're heading to the ski centre. And we did see some torches down there, so I think someday doing the West Highland Way was actually camped down there. It's just so still compared to yesterday. And this tent has performed fantastic. It's really quite spacious inside. I would say though that the inner nest, I'm five foot ten. And I was comfortable in there. I think if you're about six foot in height, it could be a bit tight. But yeah, I really slept well. That mat, this big Agnes mat I bought, really good, really comfortable. With it being rectangular and kind of long wide, yeah, it was fantastic. I had no issues on that and it was really warm. Yeah, no problem last night with that at all. So a nice little setup this, really enjoyed it and I'm going to use this tent and set up for my coming trips over the winter. I want to do some snow camps with it, that'd be really nice. As always there's some condensation on the inside of the, the fly sheet. Yeah, the grass here and the ground here is really wet. You're going to get condensation no matter what tent you use. So again, this is a bonus where you can pack away all your kit, take the inner tent out and then it's just a case of shaking out the fly sheet and putting that away in your bag. That's most of the rucksack packed. But I think I'm going to have a quick coffee with my little alcohol stove. Yeah, before I head down the road. Just before I head off, I'm going to leave a couple of links at the end. One is going to be for Outlawed Landscapes and his advice on the Hexbeak tent I was using today, the tweaks he done and how to pitch it. And I'll also leave a link to the memorial that I'll clean the plaque on over there if you haven't seen it and want to watch it. But Murray's got his drone up. Doing some uh, filmmaking with that. Yeah, I'm ready to go. I have to be home early, as always. And that's it for this one. Been great to get out, have a wild camp. It's been fantastic. And until the next time, folks, yeah, take care.